my initial years in this world was all about singing dancing and memorizing all kinds of songs which played at home in the cassettes cassettes are absolutely obsolete now i even saw the stage where cassettes were replaced by cd's and today's music listeners prefer the audio streaming platforms and some even listen to music and watch music on youtube to put it more accurately but i saw as a baby cassettes in their retiring stage apart from the recorded music my mother has been a professional artist and being second generation musician comes with a lot of advantages i've had all that so i feel very blessed that my mother used to refresh my ears every now and then with her riyas which is practice but just having a knack for something or even great talent is not good enough that's what my parents thought and thank god they thought like that they took me to my guruji so that i can learn music formally under him when i met my guruji shri jain sarkar he's one of the senior most disciples of pandit ajay chakravarti ji i understood that my casual jamming sessions at home were only the tip of the iceberg i saw other children in the class singing sargams at maddening speed and singing some combinations which i cannot make or i had not tried making rather so that felt really attractive and i wanted to achieve that that stage of singing but how to do it the techniques i needed to learn it so that was the right place my talim under him of hindustani classical music and vocal training also started formally and i was absolutely restless for a giant leap the initial lesson for any student is definitely the first basic notes seven notes sat sur which are expressed in different parts of the world differently because people have different languages but it comes down to the same thing some sing it like do re mi fa sol la ti but i learned it as sa re ga ma pa dha ni so the first note that is sa sa this can be perceived as home as it is our starting point but it can also be perceived as our destination strange interesting right because we start from sa re ga ma pa da ni and then sa so we eventually reach where we started from after sa another octave starts let us understand the concept of octaves i'll give you a hypothetical example supposedly we are standing in front of a three story building having a ground floor a middle floor and a topmost floor and in these floors all these floors the length breadth area and even the format of rooms are identical in that case we know that it is only us who are going up and down the stairs which changes our position as a result of which our surroundings change the change is only contextual but nothing actually changes the topmost floor might give us a bird's eye view of the surrounding greenery whereas the ground floor might give us a view of the passers by in the adjacent road this idea mirrors itself interestingly in case of octaves let me show you how sa re ga ma pa da ni sa ni ga ba ma ga re sa mid octave lower octave sa ni da pa high octave sa re ga ma ga re sa so the notes remain the same sa re ga ma pa da ni but the way we sound depending on our position our texture changes slightly the way we sound changes but the swaras are the same the more we do the octave practice it helps us build our range so it's always good to work on it but something that my guruji always stressed upon was kharch karyas the more we practice downwards and build our range in the lower octave 
and push ourselves in the lower octave, the better it is for us because this makes our voice more robust and the years to come, in the years to come rather, we'll understand that by doing so, we have already worked on the higher octave as well. So, isn't it great? So, this has helped me a lot in my musical career because in different forms of music, I understood that in my growing years, the practice, the riyas that I did to develop my lower end has helped me to build my range upwards also. But it is always very, very important because every voice has its own range. So very important to have respect for the range that you have. One can be a great singer even with a small range. I have seen a lot of singers with very small range but amazing in that little area, in their zone. So have respect for your range but also in your growing years push yourselves downwards to build your strength in the lower end. But another thing to be kept in mind while doing the octave practice is if you're a student and you're in your adolescence period then it's very important to take care of your voice and know your limitations because this is the time your voice is growing and transforming. So don't push yourselves in higher notes in terms of excessive practice in a higher pitch. This can be very very harmful for the voice and you can even lose your voice by doing so on a daily basis. So this is something which is very very essential. Doing the right kind of riyas is very important. Having an acoustic tanpura is ideal to begin with for any student of music. To sing correctly, we need to hear perfectly. We need to train our ears so that our ears can judge and tell us if we are singing the notes accurately enough. The tanpura is like a correct reference which can help us do this and master this. The first lesson, which is not a beginner's lesson though, might seem a little boring also, but later on you'll be thanking yourself if you can do it mindfully. It is a standing note practice, which is holding one single swar or note, simply for as long as our breath allows us to. For example, sa. Deep inhale, sa. And in this process, we have to make sure that we are not restless. Standing note should be like a standing note. And reduce our restlessness. This practice is very essential. We have to stick to one note till what we are singing becomes completely one with the Tanpura. It will merge with the Tanpura and become inseparable. And then we can move to the next note. Sa re ga sa ga sa ka re ga ma ma ga re ma ga ma pa ga pa ga pa ma pa da da pa ma da pa sa re ga ma pa da da re ga ma pa da ni ni ga ma da da ni sa Did I sing two dhas? I didn't sing the swar twice, the same swar twice, but the two dhas are in two different positions. Here I come, let me introduce you to the variants or the komal counterparts of the four Shuddh Swaras. Out of all the Shuddh Swaras, Re Gadhani have their variants. Sa Re, this is Komal Re, Komal Gandhar is Sa Re Ga Madhyam Pa Komal Dha Dha Komal Ni Ni then sa again sa ni da pa ma ga re sa so by singing just the komal swaras did you notice that it adds a different color 
to any composition. These notes, these variants, does add a different dimension to many musical compositions and pieces. So, when we sing 12 notes together, it is like Sa Re Re Ga Ga Ma Ma Pa Da Da Ni Ni Sa Sa Ni Ni Da Da Pa Ma Ma Ga Ga Re Re Sa So, uh, in one octave, we have to cover 12 notes to reach another octave. Coming to Ma, Madhyam. Ma is a person, is a special person in all our lives because she's the one who brings us on earth. Coming to the Swar Ma, Madhyam, that's also unique in its own way because it has a variant which is not called Komal like other Rega Dhani, these notes. The variant of Madhyam is Tivra Madhyam or in Bengali, we learnt it as Kodima. Sa Re Ga Ma. This is Kodima. So, coming to the static notes Pa and Sa, Pancham and Sharaj, these provide relief as they are stagnant. So, now I sing Do Re Mi Fa Sol La Ti Fi. Sa Re Ga Sa Ga Sa Ga Re Ga Ma Ma Ga Re Ma Ga Ma pa pa ga pa ga pa ma pa da da pa ma da pa sa re ga ma pa da da re ga ma pa da ni ni ga ma da da ni sa ni ni da ma ni pa sa. As a true beginner, one might be a bit more habituated with the language of numerics than notes. So, if I tell you to make a pattern or make patterns, consecutive patterns, using the numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. I'm sure you'll be able to do it and it'll be quite fun. This exercise will tell you and introduce you to the new lesson. So let's take an example. The first set is 1, 2, 3. The second set would be 2, 3, 4 and the third one would be 3, 4, 5 and so on. So, the commonality is that the pattern remains the same, but the shifting of the starting number to the adjacent number in the immediately next combination changes the rest of the numbers in that set. When we replace the numbers with notes, we get 1, 2, 3 becomes Sarega, 2, 3, 4 is Regama, or it can be a different combination also. 1, 2, 4, 3, Sare Maga, Sare Maga, 2, 3, 5, 4, Rega Pama, and so on. So, the easy or a little um, simpler combinations to start with would be Sare Ga, Sare Gama. Sa re ga re ga ma ga ma pa ma pa da pa da ni da ni sa sa ni da ni da pa da pa ma pa ma ga ma ga re ga re sa Each set is known as a palta. Paltas can be of different difficulty levels. It can be smaller, longer, complex, intricate, simpler, of different types. These combinations can be played in musical instruments as well. So I cannot really say that it is only a exclusively vocal exercise. Since I am a vocal artist, I look at it as a form of vocal exercise used to achieve perfect pitching, which is hitting a note accurately, vocal agility and flexibility. The paltas that were my initial paltas and which introduced me to this world were somewhat like this. Sari 
सारे गा मा पद रे गा मा पद नी गा मा पद नी सा नी दा पा मा नी दा पा मा गरी दा पा मा गरी सा सारे गा मा पद नी रे गा मा पद नी सा नी दा पा मा गरी नी दा पा मा गरी सा सो एस आई मूव अहेड यू कैन नोटिस दैट आई एम एडिंग वन नोट टू इंक्रीज द लेंथ ऑफ माय पल्टास दैट्स हाउ आई मूव अप द लैडर ऑफ डिफिकल्टी इन द वर्ल्ड ऑफ पल्टास सो दीस कैन आल्सो बी custom made you can make personalized paltas to suit your own needs supposedly i want to achieve vocal agility in that case i might make a palta which has a lot of inversions an inversion palta that is sa re ga ma sa ni da pa like as if you are going up the ladder and your friend is coming down sa re ga ma sa ni da pa re ga ma pa ni da pa ma ga ma pa da da pa ma ga मा बदानी पा मगरे पदानी सा मगरे सा सो दिस हैज अ लॉट ऑफ जंपिंग नोट्स इन इट एंड पल्टाज लाइक सागा पा मरे नी दिस आर सिंपल इफ आई वांट टू डू अ लॉन्ग वन इन दैट केस सागा पा मरे नी रे सागा रे मा गा पा रे मा दा पा गा सागा रे मा गा पा मा दा और नेवी अ पल्टा लाइक सागा पा सा नी रे मा दा रे सा एंड सो ऑन so these have a lot of jumping notes notes which are not adjacent to each other far away from each other but sung together which will help me achieve confidence in terms of pitching there are some ornamental elements in indian classical music like taans murkis and gamaks that's a different subject in itself but if we want to increase our clarity of tans then we can treat these as akar paltas we can practice akar paltas with the same combinations or make a palta specially to increase our clarity of tans like sare re sare re sare sare re re sare re sa a by jerking i create an ornamental element which is called tan sare ga ma pa da ni sa ni sari ga ma ma ga re sare a another akar palta would be sa ja pa pa ma ma pa pa re re pa pa sa ja pa pa or maybe sa ja re re sa ja ga ga sa ja ma ma sa ja pa pa re re ga ga re re ma ma re re pa pa re re da da ga ga ma ma ga ga pa pa ga ga da da ga ga ni ni so if i sing these combinations in akar then it will help me to achieve both agility of notes because this has jumping notes and also i'll achieve clarity of tans by practicing it in akar and so on a fun thing to do is introducing the komal swaras in paltas that can be scary initially but it will add a lot of color to our paltas only komal swar palta would be sare ga ma sare ga ma re ga ma pa all complex one sare ga ma pa da pa re ga ma pa da ni da and so on a palta using tivra madhyam tivra swar sare ga ma pa da pa re ga ma pa da ni da and paltas can be in a single palta we can mix shuddh swaras komal swaras and tivra swar like the first set can be only of shuddh swaras sa re ga ma ga re sa the second set re ga ma pa ma ga re so like this we can achieve great confidence over all the 12 notes i am super excited to be able to introduce you to the next practice which is hardam sargam my guru ji used to refer to this as hardam sargam that's where i caught it this is not a concrete term though hardam sargam is a bit scary but once you master it it is great fun trust me the aim of hardam sargam is to go aimless and sing the notes in an haphazard manner hardam is a hindi word which means all the time and sargam is a sequence of notes or simply notes by doing so we are bound to go breathless and by going breathless we increase the capacity of our lungs and improve 
our mastery on sur and swaras. Unlike paltas, there is no specific design or pattern that we have to follow in haltam sargam. Sa pa ma ga re ga ni da pa da ma pa da sa ni da pa da sa ni da pa da ma da pa ma ga ma ga re sa ni za ga re ma ga pa ma ga re ga ni da pa da ma pa sa ni da pa da pa ma ga ma ga re ga ni da pa ma ga ma re sa. So these are some examples, but we are not supposed to stop till we are out of breath in har dam sarga. That's the concept. And also another thing to be kept in mind, I personally, when I do my riyas, I fall into the trap of paltas. I suggest you please don't because hardam sarkam is characterized by its randomness and unpredictability so we have to make sure that we are true to its character to begin with we can consolidate these two things palta to start with then moving on to hardam sarkam it will sound somewhat like this सारे गा मा सा गे मा रे सा गा मा रे गा सा मा रे गा मा पा रे मा गा पा गा रे मा पा गा मा रे पा नी दा पा मा गा मा गा रे गा नी दा पा मा गा मा रे सा रे गा मा गा मा पा मा पा दा पा दा गा रे सा नी सा नी दा पा दा गा रे सा नी दा पा मा गा मा दा पा रे गा मा गा रे नी रे सा नी दा पा दा नी सा रे गा रे गा मा पा मा गा रे सा सो दिस वाज एन एग्जांपल ऑफ हाउ अ कंसोलिडेटेड वर्जन विद साउंड सो आई चूज दिस स्पीड बट नॉट नेसेसरी दैट यू हैव टू चूज द सेम स्पीड to begin with i would always suggest that you start from a slower tempo it is always wiser to start slow children learn to walk first before they can run as you can see the notes in a slow tempo in an enlarged form as a result you can sing them more accurately and hit the notes more accurately once you get accustomed or too comfortable in a specific speed then obviously you have to push yourself to come out of that comfort zone and move to a higher speed this is how you can alter your practice according to your current ability and sometimes pushing yourself to broaden your spectrum as a singer and vocalist to wrap up with i would like to say that this is a habit that will give you a short returns tomorrow because any good habit is like an investment made today which will give a short returns tomorrow so do this form this today for a better tomorrow